Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I share with you my techniques and tips on how I draw and paint white fur. So be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. So first of all I'll just do an outline using the Carbothello 708 pencil. It's a perfect grey pencil to use on the grey pastel mat. I've included the finished study as an insert photograph so you can see how I progressed to that point. So this is what I started with to start with, just the basic colours. Uh, just filling in the tooth now, just basically the underdrawing is just to get things in the correct place get a feel for what works trying different things experimenting add an orange now just so i can make my own greys because the complementary color of blue is orange and when you put those two together they make greys so I added a different blue now, it's more of a warmer blue I'm using um, which helped with getting that sort of colour shade I was looking for. So this initial stage is to play about with the colours you've got, see what works and all I'm doing is mixing them together using the complementary colour so it's blue and orange together and white and a little bit of red here and there just to make a pinky haze because there's pinks, there's like warm uh, slightly warm whites as well so a bit of yellow here and there so all I'm doing is just basically getting everything in position all right here's some greys I'm going to be using for the details later on just showing you what colors I've chosen there but they'll be put to one side for a bit because what I'll be doing is using these colors here but mainly the blue and the orange now this is a great bit of kit, this extender here, it took me a long time to find one which is wide enough to take a Caran d'Ache pencil. I've had to wrap tape around it so it don't fall out but they're well worth getting. Uh, I've got a link in the description below if you want to check them out. So what I'm basically doing is putting the white down and then glazing over the, the colours then. So I'm, I'm putting the white down, getting the shape of the fur and then going over them with blue and orange and different combinations of more orange and more blue or more blue to get the correct shade if I need to go a little bit dark I'm putting a bit of brown in there as well but this is just the basic sort of um, getting the values right but all the subtleties will change as you can see the different colour in the actual finished study to what I've got here at the moment but this is just how it is when you first do this but then when you start glazing over top and putting white again over you can change these things up because some areas are more like a warmer colour and some is more colder so it's a case of just building it up but having that insight that things will change so don't worry about it not looking at, at like the actual colours exactly right it's just the values and the positioning so you basically drawing it more accurately uh, but it's still not the detail stage that will come later in the video just slowing things down to real time just to show you and just to recap that these are the colors I'm using um, just to get those subtleties and mainly to be using the, this blue and that orange together to create the greys so just changing things up here and there just it's a case of just working out what parts are warmer, what parts are colder and then just keep playing with the combination. 
You see, it's very difficult to find a pencil which is the correct colour. That's why doing it like this and using these colours very subtly, you get like it's all sorts of rainbow colours. It's, it's amazing how many different shades and subtleties there is in white fur. But doing it this way, you can just blend and be very subtle with it and just and just keep moving things around. It's surprising how it builds up. Just slowing it down now into real time so you can see how I'm doing it. So basically I'm using the Canon Dash White first, then glaze over the top of that. Um, so you basically you're putting the white down, glazing over, white down, glazing over. Um, if it's too blue, when you put the blue down, you just put a little bit of orange and it creates that subtlety you're looking for. Now if you find that some areas are more purpley colour, then you add a little bit of red to it and that subtles that blue into more going towards the purple side of things. If it's more greenier, you put a little bit of yellow to it. If you're getting value from this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Now to really get that freshness, I'm using the Rembrandt sticks, pure white, and then glaze over the top of that again, but that freshness will shine through then. So here and there I'm using that Rembrandt stick just in places that needs to be really fresh and stand out. So I'll just keep using that white, that fresh white and glaze over, fresh white glaze over. Uh, I use a red as well sometimes just to uh, make it more of a purpley colour in some areas a more purpley pinky colour um, and some are more like going towards uh, a warmer white, a bit of yellow with it, so you have to sort of work out what needs to be done underneath, so while well, you're just building up those sort of colours. This study will be on my Patreon, probably going to be sort of middle of August 2021. It'll be on as a step-by-step, -step, real time audio, real time video, over two hours long, as I'm working on it, I'm discussing what my feelings are, why I'm doing it this way. So it's more in depth. So if you want to check that out, please find the link in the description below. Right, so I've jumped a little bit here. So I've just drawn in exactly like I've done below, I've done on the top. There is the greys I'm using just to put the details in. The reason I'm using greys now instead of mixing the colours is that it's very difficult to get the actual mark making you want when you're doing whiskers and things. Uh, sometimes you need a help with a colour that is very similar because it, it just saves a lot of time putting different colours in to get that shade. I mean I could mix that shade if I wanted to but it would take probably three or four attempts but then you can't really do one mark and keep going over it because it smudges it so sometimes you have to use a pencil close to it and then you can glaze a little bit over the top just to subtle it up. If you're enjoying this video why not give it a like and share it with your friends. It would mean so much to me because this would help the channel to grow. It's really important to keep your pencil sharp at this stage. Just putting those fine details in here and there and just working inch by inch, just doing the similar sort of thing, just making everything more refined and more subtler. And then you're working on values as well at the same time. You're working out not only values, but also the edges as well. So you're softening some areas, but keeping other areas sharp. So you're getting a balance. But what I'm doing there is putting the white down, as you saw there, but then again, glaze over the top with the, the blue and the orange and it's just a process of just keep repeating that until you achieve the right feel you want really.
working with different shades of grey this one's quite handy because it's a blue grey which is very similar to what I'm looking for it just helps to get that sort of texture you want in and mark making by using these pencils but like I said before we just got glaze over this later um, what with white and also other colours to subtle it up but it's handy to have these in your kit if you've got them and that's a Carbothello one uh, it's a really nice grey I'm just being really um, flowing with this white just getting that feeling of fluffy hair and just get that feeling the rhythm and just do sort of fly away hair here and there um, but you've got these subtle colours that's underneath it as well so it's a really play of really subtleties it's quite interesting to draw actually now with the whiskers it's best to put like a little spot of a highlight here and there rather than one continuous white piece of marking it's just a little bit of highlight here and there and it just makes it more subtler With these final touches as well, it's, you really just open your heart, let go of the mind and really focus on the energy that's coming through this fair as well because there's the animal's energy that you're actually sensing so that needs to be put in there. Even though this is just a four inch square study, there's still energy that needs to be put in. Um, so it's a case of opening the heart go of the mind and just really melt into the feeling of what you can feel and the more you open up your heart the more that feeling will shine out of the reference image Just speeding things up a little bit now just to uh, just show you how it finished up but like I say if you're interested in supporting me with Patreon I really appreciate that as well all helps with this free content on YouTube um, where I'll be doing a step by step and it's over two hours long so you'll see every step of the way explained in detail and a big massive thank you to all my Patreons for supporting me. I can't thank you enough. It means so much to me and it makes all what I'm doing possible. Here's the finished study at the correct angle. Thank you for watching the video right through to the end. If you found value in it and you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Appreciate it. it would help the channel. Leave a comment and a message. In the comments below uh, let me know what sort of videos you want me to produce i've actually left a couple of links here for you to uh, click on and to subscribe click on the circle here it's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos thank you so much take care and be well